Hi guys. This short video will introduce you to some core ideas about the rate at which many drugs are eliminated. These are important concepts because they will eventually help you understand various aspects of drug disposition, particularly how long drug effects last and also the intensity of these effects. Let us perhaps begin by considering the case of Mr. Tan, a crane operator, who is contemplating taking an antihistamine for his runny nose. Now, Mr. Tan frequently gets drowsy with antihistamines and he's legitimately concerned about whether or not he will still be drowsy the next morning about 10 hours after taking the medicine. Now, assuming that drowsiness is directly related to the presence of circulating antihistamines, the answer to Mr. Tan's problem fundamentally revolves around the issue of how quickly the drug is eliminated from the circulation. Most drugs are eliminated not at a fixed rate, but at the rate that is concentration dependent. In this case, let's assume the drug is being eliminated at the rate of 10% of its concentration every hour. This concentration dependent elimination is called linear or first order kinetics. Now we can very easily tabulate the hourly loss of drug and estimate the concentrations at any time. In this case, we can estimate that at 10 hours after the initial concentration, the remaining concentration is going to be about 35% of the initial concentration. Now, we cannot predict how much drowsiness Mr. Tan will have, but because he still has 35% of drug remaining in his body 10 hours after taking the medicine, it is probably prudent to advise him to avoid operating heavy machines for at least another day. But let's look a bit more about the plasma concentration time curve. There's lots more we can learn from here. The concentration-dependent plasma concentration curve can actually be described by an exponential equation. Here, C is the plasma concentration at any time point. C0 is the initial plasma concentration and T is the elapsed time. And most importantly, the rate constant for the shape of the concentration time curve. This exponential shape of the elimination profile is actually quite common for many drugs. This kind of mono-exponential decline in drug concentrations is called a one-compartment model. This is because mathematically, it is conceived that everything occurs within a single mathematical compartment. Now this is a curved line. But if we plot this exponential curve on the log concentration axis, we can make the curve into a straight line. The slope of this line will then be equal to k, the elimination rate constant. Here, we can calculate the k for this drug to be 0.105 per hour. But we don't have to stop here. The elimination rate constant k has an inverse relationship with the half-life through the natural log of 2. Now this is a very useful pharmacokinetic relationship to remember because we can use this to understand a lot of pharmacokinetics. For example, now that we know that the elimination rate constant we can calculate the time life of this antihistamine to be about 6.6 .6 hours. In many clinical situations, it is more likely that we have an estimate of the elimination half-life rather than the elimination rate constant. So we can make use of this half-life information to estimate K. Having estimated the elimination rate constant, we can apply this value to the exponential equation and estimate the plasma concentration at any time point of interest. In this case, we can estimate that if the initial concentration is 100, the concentration at 10 hours will be 34.9. Now, so far, we have been using a mono-exponential equation to describe the elimination of this drug. For many other drugs, however, a mono-exponential equation may be inadequate and the curve may best be described by a bi-exponential equation with two slopes and rate constants, alpha and beta. 
This type of elimination profile is described as a two-compartment model as compared to a one-compartment model for the previous mono-exponential equation. In this case, the two slopes are conventionally attributed to a distribution and elimination phase. Okay, I hope this short session has been helpful to you. There's lots more to come. Do continue to follow this channel because we have more videos coming up for you. Look out for videos on non-linear kinetics, half-life and clearance mechanisms. I'll see you then.